Hello and welcome back to Neo Psychology of me, your teacher, Mr. Neo, the channel where I teach psychology lessons to my wonderful students. Today we're looking at the topic of schizophrenia, specifically lesson four, biological explanations. The dopamine hypothesis. What is this dopamine hypothesis I hear you speak of? What has dopamine got to do with schizophrenia? Well, that's what we're going to look at today, aren't we? Let's get started. There we go. Starter. Are these symptoms of schizophrenia positive or negative? Let's have a look. See if you can do it. Do it in your head with me, please. First one. Disorganized speech. Positive or negative? It's positive. It's a positive symptom. You're thinking of another one. Speech poverty. Right. Hallucinations. Hallucinations. Is that positive or negative? That is positive as well. Anhedonia. Anhedonia is the loss of interest in usual activities. It's also a symptom of depression, but it is a symptom of schizophrenia as well. Is it positive or negative? It is negative because it's a loss of something. I used to be really enjoying doing this and now I no longer doing this. Disorganized behavior. Is this positive or negative symptom? This is a positive symptom. It's an additional thing that's happened. Speech poverty. Is that positive or negative? This is a negative symptom. I used to be able to speak loads and talk very well. And now I don't have that ability. It's been taken away. Avolition. That is a negative symptom. Avolition. I, I've lost of interest. No, uh, it's a lack of motivation to complete activities. Effective flattening. That is a negative symptom. Well done. And delusion is, of course, a positive symptom. How did you do? Not very well? Don't worry. I love you anyway. You're a great student. Here we go. Let's look at our learning objectives for today. Number one, show comprehension and apply knowledge of the original dopamine hypothesis. Identify and analyze the revised dopamine hypothesis. Oh, there's two hypotheses. And number three, that is the plural of hypothesis, to be able to discuss and evaluate the dopamine hypothesis as a whole. Let's start with number one, the original dopamine hypothesis. As we looked at last lesson, there are many different explanations for schizophrenia, but it is the biological explanations that have received the most research support to date. The importance of biological explanations for schizophrenia does not, however, deny the important role that psychological factors play in the disorder. Current thinking is that the diathesis stress relationship or the interaction between biological and psychological factors may be at work with a biological predisposition for schizophrenia only developing into the disorder if other significant psychological stresses are present in the person's life. Most modern health professionals believe that schizophrenia is at least partly biological in origin. Biological explanations are concerned with genetic vulnerability to schizophrenia, genetic factors. The role of the neurotransmitter dopamine, which we're looking at today, the dopamine hypothesis, and the neural correlates of schizophrenia. These three explanations are interrelated or they're connected because if schizophrenic, if schizophrenia is genetic, then those genes lead to biological differences such as abnormal levels of dopamine and or abnormal structures of the brain, which is neural correlates. Here are the three biological explanations for schizophrenia and today we're looking at the dopamine hypothesis. Let's have a look at the original dopamine hypothesis. What does this say? The dopamine hypothesis claims that an excess of the neurotransmitted dopamine, so that's more, in certain regions of the brain is associated with the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Schizophrenics are thought to have abnormally high numbers of D2 or dopamine receptors on receiving neurons, resulting in more dopamine binding and therefore more neurons firing. The key role played by dopamine was highlighted in two sources of evidence, drugs that increase dopaminergic activity and drugs that decrease dopaminergic activity. So what we found is people with schizophrenia, not only have they got higher levels of dopamine, they've also got more D2 dopamine receptors amongst the neurons in the neurotransmission in the synapse. So more, more dopamine is being passed from neuron to neuron. Okay, 
and this has been confirmed, well, this has been supported by research done with drugs. So drugs that increase dopaminergic activity or increase the dopamine in your body. One example of a drug that does this is amphetamines. Amphetamines like, um, I think one drug that's an amphetamine is like ketamine, like those horse tranquilizers that those kids do nowadays. Naughty, naughty, don't do drugs for horses. That's my catchphrase, right? Amphetamine is a dopamine agonist. It is, it stimulates nerve cells containing dopamine, causing the synapse to be flooded with the neurotransmitter. Normal individuals exposed to large doses of dopamine, releasing drugs such as amphetamines can develop the characteristic symptoms of a schizophrenic episode, which generally disappear with abstinence from the drug. If you take amphetamines, it will increase those symptoms of schizophrenia like hallucinations and delusions. So these amphetamines increase, increase dopamine and then one that, once the dopamine has been increased, then what we found is that people are um, developing symptoms of schizophrenia like, uh, like um, hallucinations and delusions. Is it the same thing the other way around if we've got drugs to stop it? Drugs that decrease dopaminergic activity. Although there are many different types of antipsychotic drug, they all have one thing in common. They block the activity of dopamine in the brain. By reducing activity in the neural pathway of the brain that use dopamine and the neurotransmitter as the neurotransmitter, these drugs eliminate symptoms such as hallucinations and delusions. The fact that these drugs, known as dopamine antagonists because they block its action, alleviate many of the symptoms of schizophrenia, strengthen the case for the important role of dopamine in this disorder. So, when you, when you take a drug that lowers the levels of dopamine, it's fine that it reduces the symptoms or alleviates the symptoms completely of schizophrenia, of the positive symptoms, hallucinations and delusions. So here we go. Here's a neuro uh, a synaptic transmission. So you can see it's the axon terminal of one neuron on the left and it's the dendrite of the neuron on the right. And we can see that is path that is passing. So the neurotransmitter sends a message. It sends a chemical message through the synapse, which then gets turned into an electrical impulse or message as well, as we can see. People with schizophrenia will have higher levels of the neurotransmitter dopamine that's being shared across the synapse. People with schizophrenia will also have higher numbers of dopamine receptors too. So, as there is an increase of dopamine activity in certain parts of the brain, higher levels of dopamine have been linked to an increase in positive symptoms of schizophrenia, such as hallucinations and delusions. Antipsychotic medication taken by many people with schizophrenia block the receptors of dopamine. By reducing the levels of dopamine, this eliminates or reduces symptoms such as hallucinations and delusions. So the the, the synaptic transmission, the neuro the the neurotransmitted dopamine can't pass through the synapse if you're taking the medication because it blocks the dopamine being passed. What is dopamine though? It's a neurotransmitter, that's for sure, but how do we define it? Let's get a definition down, please. Dopamine is a what? It's a what? It's a neurotransmitter that generally has an excitatory effect and is associated with the sensation of pleasure. Usually, what? High or low levels of dopamine are associated with schizophrenia? High or low? High levels of dopamine are associated with schizophrenia and usually low levels of dopamine are associated with Parkinson's disease. Challenge, can you summarize the key term of dopamine into six words? Give that a go if you want to challenge yourself. And that's the original dopamine hypothesis. Right, identify one thing you learned about the original dopamine hypothesis. Why do you think learning about the original dopamine hypothesis is important? And how does it apply in real life? Any other questions about dopamine? What are you still wondering about? Let me know. Otherwise, we can have a look at the revised dopamine hypothesis. I've ticked off the original dopamine hypothesis. You can't stop me. We're cracking on. The revised dopamine hypothesis. Neurotransmitters.
The brain's chemical messengers appear to work differently in the brain of a patient with schizophrenia. In particular, dopamine is widely believed to be involved. Dopamine is important in the functioning of several brain systems that may be implicated in the symptom of schizophrenia. Yes, we know. Hyperdopaminergia in the subcortex, so it is high levels of dopamine. The original version of dopamine hypo hypothesis focused on the possible role of high levels or activity of dopamine. Hyperdopaminergia in the subcortex, i.e. the central areas of the brain. For example, an excess of dopamine receptors in Broca's area, as we all know is responsible for speech reduction, may be associated with poverty of speech and the experience of auditory hallucinations. These are positive symptoms. However, hypodopaminergia in the cortex, which is low levels of dopamine, find that more recent versions of the dopamine hypothesis has focused instead on abnormal dopamine systems in the brain's cortex. Goldman, Rakic, et al. in 2004 have identified a role for low levels of dopamine in the frontal cortex responsible for thinking and decision making can lead to negative symptoms of schizophrenia. It may be that both hyper and hopa dopaminergia are correct explanations. Both high and low levels of dopamine in different brain regions are involved in schizophrenia. So the original dopamine, dopamine hypothesis was quite simplistic and said, well, high levels of dopamine equals positive symptoms of schizophrenia. What this revised dopamine hypothesis is suggesting is, yes, I agree, high levels, of, high levels of dopamine in certain areas of the brain lead to positive symptoms. However, in other areas of the brain, low levels of dopamine may result in negative symptoms of schizophrenia in certain areas of the brain. There are two brains here. The red part are the levels of dopamine in the brain. Which brain is of a schizophrenic patient? The one on the left is a normal level of dopamine in the human brain and the one on the right is an elevated level of dopamine in the brain of a schizophrenic patient. Okay, I got a question for you lot. Application question, Parkinson's and the dopamine hypothesis. Parkinson's disease is a degenerative condition in which cells in a, neuro, in a region of the brain called the substantia nigra die resulting in a reduction in dopamine levels. This in turn affects the brain's ability to control movement. Parkinson's is treated with drugs that help the brain produce more dopamine. However, these drugs worsen the symptoms of schizophrenia. Number one, what does this suggest about the dopamine hypothesis as an explanation for schizophrenia? And then extension, now imagine that a new drug for treating Parkinson's also worked by raising dopamine levels only in the cortex and that this reduced the symptoms of schizophrenia. What would this suggest about the dopamine hypothesis? Write your answer now, pause the video and I'm gonna go through the answers right now. Here we go, have you paused it? Do the answers, write the answers down before I give you the answer, don't be lazy. Number one, the fact that drugs the fact that drugs that strengthen the action of dopamine worsens the symptoms of schizophrenia provides support for the dopamine hypothesis. And then the extension, this would suggest that the original dopamine hypothesis involving hyperdopaminergia in the subcortex is incorrect. Because if this were correct, we would expect any drug that raises dopamine levels to worsen schizophrenia. However, it is compatible with the more recent subcortical uh, hypodopaminergia hypothesis. And that's the revised dopamine hypothesis. Identify one thing you learned about the revised dopamine hypothesis. Why do you think it's important? And how does this apply in real life? If you've got any more questions, please feel free to ask me. Put it in an email. Put it in the comments. Maybe I'll answer it. Maybe someone else will answer it. I won't answer it. Maybe someone else can answer it. Okay, and that's the revised dopamine hypothesis. Identify and analyze the revised dopamine hypothesis. Are you ready for me to tick that off? You're not? Well, I'm going to do it anyway. There we go, I've ticked it off. We're moving on to learning objective three to be able to discuss and evaluate the dopamine hypothesis, right? Are there any strengths and weaknesses that support this dopamine hypothesis? Let's have a look, shall we?
Evaluation. What are some of the strengths and weaknesses of this dopamine hypothesis? Okay, so task. Discuss whether each of the following facts is a strength or a limitation of the dopamine hypothesis. Justify your answer in each case. So I've given you six evaluative points and you have to discuss whether you think they're a strength or a weakness and explain why maybe. So let's do number one together. It is difficult to assess brain levels of dopamine in schizophrenia and schizophrenics, okay? Is that a strength or a weakness? This is a limitation because it would be difficult to carry out studies to find evidence supporting the link between dopamine levels and schizophrenia. Okay, lovely. Let's have a look at two, three, four, five, and six now. Research has shown that drugs that increase levels of dopamine, for example, amphetamines, produce psychotic schizophrenic symptoms. Is that for strength or a weakness? Explain why it is as well. This is what would be your evaluative point. Number three, clozapine is the most effective drug at reducing schizophrenic symptoms. It acts on serotonin as well as dopamine. Is that a strength or a weakness? It's sort of both, you know. You could say, well, it's a strength because it's reducing dopamine. It's found to be effective treatment. However, it's also reducing serotonin. So maybe serotonin is more of the issue here than dopamine. Maybe. Number four, high levels of dopamine could actually be a symptom of schizophrenia. Okay, that's like a weakness because it's suggesting about cause and effect. How do you know that it's not the fact that they have high levels of dopamine that causes schizophrenic symptoms, or it's not the fact that they have schizophrenia that causes you to have high levels of dopamine? Number five, an excess number of dopamine receptors have been found in Broca's area, which is linked to speech production and auditory hallucinations. That would be a strength. And then number six, antipsychotic drugs that reduce schizophrenia do so by blocking this neurotransmitter. That's another strength as well. So we're going to skip those. And let's have a look at the question. Outline one strength and one weakness of the dopamine hypothesis. Answer the question in a peel paragraph structure. Give that a go, please. One strength, one weakness, right? I would start my, my sentence with one strength of the dopamine hypothesis as a biological explanation of schizophrenia is, and then one weakness of the dopamine hypothesis as a biological explanation for schizophrenia is, blah, 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 blah. And then explain why it's a strength or why it's a weakness. Each one should get you two points each, two marks each. Five minutes, time yourself, five minutes. There we go. And that's the dopamine hypothesis. What's one thing you learned about the evaluation? Why is it important? And how does this apply in real life? What questions has the evaluation raised for you? What are you still wondering about? Are you getting, you're wondering about anything else? If you are, please do feel free to let me know. Discuss and evaluate the dopamine hypothesis. We've done it. I'm ticking it. We're done. Tick, tick, tick. Plenary. What's this? Summarize. Summarize the dopamine hypothesis into one sentence. Then reduce the dopamine hypothesis into five words, if possible. Then reduce the dopamine hypothesis into one word. Dopamine. <laughs> hypothesis. I don't know. Something along those lines. If you want, watch this video on the dopamine hypothesis. It's essentially what we've spoken about already, but it talks a little bit more. Well, not more. It's, it's in less detail, if anything. My lesson smashed it. And that's today's lesson. That's the biological... Uh, next lesson is lesson five. The biological explanations of neural correlates. Thank you for watching today's lesson, guys. You've been brilliant. Well done, my neuropsychologist. Great work today. Keep up the good work. Make sure you write your notes for today's lesson. God bless and peace. I'm feeling like well. I feel like a prince. I'm feeling myself. I'm loaded with bills. Cause I wasn't blessed with no uncle Phil. Don't know how it feels. I wanted to flex. They told me to chill. I'm making a flip. My life is a flick. Now load up the flip. Yeah.